Next, and certainly not least, we have the next list from Pranis Comp Compris. I'm sorry, buddy. If you're out there, don't don't feel bad. I'm illiterate. Um, we have red ones go faster. Here we are with a cult of speed. The cult of speed has finally made its arise, you boys. Uh, in 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 singles, you know, because we've seen it on like teams, and we've seen it on uh, you know, other people kind of talk about it in the background, and really niche players will make it work. Yet here it is, live and in charge, a singles player going uh three one one. So I know he didn't you know win win, but this wasn't WTC scoring. This was a, a clear normal win. So he tied someone 72 to 72. So let's take a look at his list very quickly. We have Def Killer War Trike with Waz Blaster. One mech. Yeah, dude. He brought a mech. Enhancements faster than use. One. Oh, I should have put the number, but that's a 20 man unit of boys. So there it is, dudes. The 20 man unit of boy mob. When we talked about the Cult of Speed video, I brought that up. You can bring knobs, you can bring 20 boys, you can bring beast snaggers, whatever it may be, but you definitely need that board pre presence mid-table bully unit, which is what ta -da, his battle wagon was. So here he goes. He has his battle wagon. We talked about the kill rig on another video. That cannot sit in the middle of the table, but a battle wagon, give it some cover, good chance it can actually survive the middle of the table. Not always, but it can. We have, uh, he didn't bring the the def roller i don't know why not just he didn't but he does have hard case on it of course he has a three-man unit of def coptas with a custom mega blaster he has a six-man unit of def coptas again with the custom mega blaster and then another six-man unit of def coptas so he almost made the full 18 but he came a little short that's okay we have a minimum size unit of gretchen followed by a host of buggies so he accompanied himself with two custom booster blasters so Oh, sorry, it's three, excuse me. Three custom booster blasters. Of course, a little flamers. If I hit you, I debuff you with minus one to hit. He has three mega track scrap jet followed by two shock jump dragsters with a six-man unit of war bikers followed by two three-man unit of, of war bikers i really like this list for a couple reasons one who doesn't love a mob boy unit right right uh but in reality what i really like is how many buggies actually made it onto this list helps make up for the fact that maybe he doesn't have max boys doesn't have max dev coptas so he just kind of filled that up with more buggies and he made sure to bring one the custom booster blasters which gives you debuffs from range like i always mention you don't necessarily put all your buggies on the front line when you're playing cult of speed guys so you don't want to put these custom booster blasters necessarily always in the front they play the kind of back line filler you know fill up the screening fill up the side of the tables uh as you move around score your, your secondaries that way they're kind of more reaction unit kind of filler uh, right they're filler the scrap jets are now your version of skirmishing just like you would talk about flash kit the units that are cheap they go out and fight go out and die of course the mega track scrap jet can try to do the mortal wounds when it charges you he kind of fights a little better he can spike shooting potential and then shock troop drags is for you to score uh so i still think for the most part your bikers are coming up first followed by def copters with buggies filling up the rest of the zone uh with mega track scrap jets being kind of like that flex response unit with a custom booster blasters falling behind in kind of similar role but you always need that mid-table presence, the ability to push people off the center, the ability to get respect. And that's where the boys in the war boss with faster than news comes into play on the battle wagon. Because otherwise, your wall kind of feels like, what am I doing with this? Um, and a lot of times your wall is just kind of like a defensive move. So today's sponsor, Baron of Dice. So Baron of Dice has great dice. They have actually enabled us to give these dice out for our paint competitions uh so i greatly advise that you go out there we have a link in the description for five percent discount that's of course because nobody likes taxes shout out to baron of dice because they are actually customizing orc dice just for us that you guys will be able to get a hold of and they look exceptional so shout out to baron of dice really appreciate you guys and i really do suggest you get them i love the actual texture these dice have Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let's take a look at his win path because, you know, that's always entertaining. Let's take a first look at where he is right now. Oh, I just passed my get. There he is. First game into the Leagues of Voltan. So, yes, he made it. He overcame the Leagues of Voltan, which actually isn't that surprising because they hate pressure. Let's take a look. We have two Iron Heel champions, Grim Demeanor and Appraising Glare. Followed by Hearth Card Warriors. A lot of time they just split these guys into like combat squads. We have three Sagittars, like I spoke about before. These ten, these guys actually have toughness ten. Super freaking annoying. Uh, super annoying for transports. One unit of Berserkers, followed by their version of Terminators, associated with grenade launchers, plasma guns, and concussion gauntlet. He has another unit of Hearth Guard, but this is a five man unit with the same loadout. Two Hecaton Land Fortresses, followed by three units of pioneers and the new jaegers so the reason why i said leagues of voltan don't like pressure is one 
they're not necessarily the best at combined arms, as in when you do kind of push them into the deployment zone, they will shoot you. They kind of do have some pushing to punch you, but then they're very slow in response and they don't have like other benefits once you're right in front of them. Um, and then you're, they're kind of exposed to get hit again with another follow-up wave because they're not reactionary moving. Um, they're not, uh, you know, uh, fast and auto advance and charging you. So you know exactly how far they're going to move in response. And their real punching potential comes from these Terminators. So once you start tagging the Sagittars and you start tagging, you know, move blocking the land fortresses and um, standing in the middle of the table and, if, you know, re uh, screening the reserves and screening the deep strike potential, you can push this fat brick of 10 Terminators out into their own deployment zone, putting them in jail, quote unquote, uh, near the deployment zone. They do, of course, have the nice little um uh the jaegers in this case but that's where you're happy to have a mega track scrap jet or like we talk about the boy the biker units where a death killer war strike or just simple bikers are going to run around and be like sure i can kill this thing i get re-rolls on my dacas i punch a little bit my power claw so you actually don't mind using those guys to leapfrog um and you kind of let them know hey i have my wall which means he might not even put those guys right in front of you a lot of the time when you're playing speed wall remember guys you're more threatening the wall than necessarily uh it carrying you to do all of your gameplay actions and responses right you're not really necessarily moving like yes now i will call the wall turn two and i will charge you into your deployment zone and i will kill your front line and all that no 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 it's a lot of the time it's um okay i'm gonna pop my invul instead for my strat i'm gonna strategically reserve uh you know place all my units in the flank so you can actually shoot me well and if someone closes the distance to punch me i'm gonna reactive move and if i react the move i've now blocked off the land fortresses i've now blocked off the satchitars i've now pushed you deeper into your deployment zone and the pioneers are the units that in their faction want to play the flanks because they can come up and off the flanks right um buggies bikers actually don't mind going total toe with pioneers they have guns so that they can pick them up with rockets um they can punch them moderately well and the pioneers don't really want to uh close the distance with them either so it's funny enough for 90 points buggies can kind of play with you and shoot at you and charge you and bikers and similar similar uh so having a lot of stuff that's fast with moderate oc ability to pop invulns and there's no good units on the cult of speed other than i'm sorry on the, yeah on the cult of speed uh put oath targets on sorry oh sorry uh um uh, the book of grudges on then the 20 man unit of boys after that you're like i'm plus one to wound to hit on that that mega track scrap jet or oh it's killed one of my guys i'm oh sure i'm not even mad about it. even if i'm mad about it, it's only 80 point unit not much value there so it diminishes their army wide ability um it still was a very hard win with 67 points i'm very sure it was one of those things where he put them in the jail and hope there's enough points left over um to you know not sorry not enough points left over for him to score the, and beat the game so just having so many units is a big factor when i was showing this list you know i'll show you again look how many units are on this list it, it was a lot to fill up when i was sitting in the slide so that's a big factor into cult of speed uh a good part of cult of speed but it's a factor into beating leagues of all time now we go into his second matchup which was 67 point win isn't a huge win but it wins a win was second matchup dark angels and we have a uh, company of hunters well, that's, that's different right it's different and this is where his tie was so we have an apothecary we have Azrael, Chaplin on bike, Raven Wing Command Squad, another Raven Wing Command Squad, another Raven Wing Command Squad, and a Tech Marine. Goodness. One Outrider Squad fully maxed. An Impulsor, followed by a Gladiator Lancer, a five man unit of Hellblasters, three units of Raven Wing Black Knight, followed by Scout Squad, and a Storm Speeder Thunder Strike. Everybody knows these Raven Wing Black Knights are annoyingly problematic for orcs as we don't really have a good way to displace them cult of speed is one of those attachments that still doesn't um the good thing is them being cheap and big bases does a little bit help so your 20 man unit allows you to play the primary here in the middle when these deathwing knights are like i will be impassable the 20 boys are like that's cool we'll just take the primary from you with our mass oc and just kind of bog you down um that's pretty cool I can see how this ends up being a tie. I can see how this was a very cagey kind of hilarious game, guys, because they're both thinking speed. So I bet you when they looked at each other, they were like, this is going to be really, really fun. Um, as for how this matchup would go, we don't know necessarily how this list run because Company of Heroes is such a, our Company of Hunters, excuse me, is such a nice Dark Angel detachment um, with maneuverability and, and all that. So it does come down to kind of a bit of dice roll luck hoping you can kill the units that aren't the terminators as well as survive the combat into the other units as well um pretty niche faction pretty niche matchup uh but he ended up with a 72 point tie not gonna see that dark angels list too often yet 
Dark Angel players aren't going to see Cult of Speed list often either. So I thought that was a really cool narrative, a uh, fun, flavorful matchup for you narrative get loving speed freaks. Now his third matchup, which this was his loss, which I can actually quite understand, was World Eaters. So we have Angron, followed by Lord Invocatus, World Eaters Lord on Juggernaut. A Jackal, two units of eight bound, followed by a three man unit of eight bound and a fat six man unit of exalted eight bound. Two unit, three, excuse me, three units of these very annoying chaos world eater spawn and two world eaters forge fiends with the ectoplasma cannon. Yeah. For cult of speed, you know what sucks? When someone can stage three man units like eight bound uh, in a ruin where you can't interact, you can't really overwatch them that well, you can't really. Uh, get the initiative and punch them either uh they auto advance six and then they charge into you and beat the crap out of your units quite effectively for 140 points so do the exalted eight bound um and of course who's really displacing angron right you can say oh i'm going to uh use the death copters and i'm gonna part popping strats that's true but angron does have a two up armor save um so he's still gonna be taking great saves there and he comes back to life oh, i just i just did the world eater juggernaut sorry uh angron not to mention all the scouting potential that these guys have. Uh, so right off the bat, even if you do go first at the Cult of Speed player, just the fact that they can scout into the terrain and go, well, after you move first, I'm just going to go right into you and start picking up your lines. Um, that's pretty much what happens a lot of the time. And the stupid World Eaters Chaos Spawn can definitely also put a mix up in there as they do have decent strength, decent fighting, really stupid durability, um, and in their case, they are, can do the opposite of the Call of Speed and get in the way for them as the rest of the effective killing of the World Eater stages up and hides in the buildings. Not to mention, you do have some Forge Fiends to play the flanks. So who's going into the middle? I'm going to get the initiative and beat you up. If you move to the flanks, I'm going to shoot you down and still have the units playing in the stages of the sides of the building. If you're skirmishing to the middle, I'll throw World Eaters uh, spawn into the middle because these dudes actually do have OC. Not to mention, if they really wanted to, they could put Jackals into the middle and sticky it and then cause you to come out and start playing the game with them. Um, so a lot of the time, Cult of Speed just isn't killing this stuff like effectively since it can't get the initiative therefore it runs into you they pick up three buggies kill two units of bikers um and then maybe they tag your 20-man unit of boys or they just straight up punch it boom you're in a, you're already on the back foot and even if your world leader boys your unit of 20 boys does run into something you know exalted eight bound could obviously reactively stage in the place to hit them first if you do end up hitting them first they have the ability to accidentally fight on death with the four up so there's just a lot of ways this matchup could just suck for a world leader uh, sorry for a for a cult of, cult of speed player which it did so he 451 point loss right there um nothing to be ashamed of I can see why World Eaters can give you a run for your money. If you're playing War Horde, it's still, you know, very winnable for us as War Horde, but that's our premium fight toe-to-toe -to -toe trade with you detachment. If you're running anything out of War Horde, it gets it gets iffy right there, including with your bully boys. So Cult of Speed, nothing to be sad about. So then he goes into his fourth game, which was the Tau Empire. Love that. So we have Commander Farsight, followed by Commander in Cold Star Battlesuit, another Cold Star Battlesuit, and an Enforcer in Battlesuit. We have one, two units of broadside battle suits, um, a crisis fire knife battle suit, a crisis star scythe battle suit, crisis sunforge battle suit. God, I was like battles it a lot. Crisis sunforge. I'm not gonna say it again. And ghost kill, ghost kill, riptide, riptide, and three units of stealth suits. The stealth suits are nice, uh, as in like they can actually kind of infiltrate and get in the way. The thing is, when you're infiltrating with the orc uh, against the orcs and something like Cult of Speed, the fact that we can go, yeah, Death Killer Warjack auto advances six and close the distance on you, automatically everybody's apprehensive. Yeah, it's behoo of you to really still play the flanks every single time you play Cult of Speed, especially against a Tau. Um, you do have to play cheeky. It's funny because we actually got to see this sort of matchup, Cult of Speed, on War Games Live versus a very good Tau player. Um, and in that case, it's like a slow, methodic, hey, I'm going to wall. Hey, I'm going to wall. And every time you're kind of scaring him that you're going to wall, you're really just staging closer and closer uh, with your reactive moves and your punching into his little chaff and, you know, consolidating after you kill them. Slowly, you kind of encapsulate them. And when they do finally come out to the mid table, as your 20 man unit boys are, you call the wall more as a de defensive way here. Uh, so very cheeky. You do have to play very patient, but you do have the tools to be towel simply because when you're playing against a shooting army, pressure king and cult of speed is all about that pressure. So his final matchup. Boop, boop, boop. We have the Thousand Suns. Dude, 
dude, come on. Call the speed players making it work, guys. You know you would hate to see some of these armies on and, and if you were playing Cult of Speed casually, yeah, he made it work, which I'm happy to see because a lot of people in Discord and such talk about how it works in Crusade and fun. So we have Aramon on Disc of Zeech, Exalted Sorcerer, Exalted Adors to Sorcerer on Disc of Zeech, Infernal Master, Magnus the Red, and Thousand Sun Sorcerator in Terminator Armor. I don't know why I did that. I just kind of excited. Um, one, two, three, four units of basic five man units of Rubric Marines, of course, followed by two units of Mutalex Vortex and a nice fat unit of Scarab Assault, uh, Scarab Occult Terminator Squad. Now, I'm not too, too familiar with um, Thousand Sun Terminators as they're just not too common. But a lot of the time it's because since they got nerfed into they can't reactive move so much and be so annoying all over the, not react move, excuse me, double move so much and be so um, punishing and, and cheeky they're looking for more survivability um and that's where that kind of this comes into play not to mention of course they still do have killing potential because that's just how terminators you know uh sorry that's just how thousand suns run you know but it's something else to ter bring terminators back uh you know i don't know about you guys you let me know in chats but are you kind of happy to see terminators kind of remaking an appearance you know just saying like overall in the whole meta um, just two of armor save units. I mean, I know our unit got killed. Sorry, there's a tight tangent. Our bully boy, you know, our, our, our mega knob got, got ruined, but that doesn't mean we don't like just the idea of, you know, big monsters coming up into play like Magnus again. Um, the, the T sons, you know, terminators coming back into play a bunch of different armies like that. So I'm just happy to see this faction as a whole, not this faction, sorry, armies as a whole just feel really good as we're looking through the cult of speed. We've seen a lot of different cool armies, uh, but the terminator with sorcerer Raider is kind of a bit new. Um, Overall, Thousand Suns are always a problematic matchup for Orcs because of their killing potential. Yet, like we talked about when the Leagues of Ultan matchup, having a bunch of units that you don't really get value into killing any singular one when you throw all of your damage, just throws these armies on the side. They're like, dang, I really hope you have like a 500 point unit I can kill. Oh, you just got boys? Oh, you just got buggies? Man, like, ugh, what am I going to do? Everything I, anything of these units that dies is problematic uh, or starts getting tagged. And, and again, even though Thousand Suns don't have range for really shooting. They're still the same kind of army that they don't want to be pressured, touched. And so as you're playing the flanks and running them down, they're kind of spurging and running all over the place, hoping that you don't get to them. And you're like, well, I'm enclosing you because when you're playing Cult of Speed, you should be playing both flanks and just threatening the mid table. And normally a Cult of uh, a Thousand Suns player is like, I'll kill this flank and then I'll react, you know, do my, my infernal gateway to run away to the to the other side and all this stuff and in this case you're like well i just have more stuff following through and you're just never going to score so he has to contest with you if he doesn't just straight up kill you enough then you win the game and that's what pretty much seemed to happen here enough stuff survived that he was able to put 81 points wasn't dying fast enough a thousand sun player just probably realized too late that he needed to get him off the objectives and he just didn't um because it's not really about killing with Cult of Speed is what you guys got to see. You want to kill enough, um, and you do have ways to kill enough in Throttle, but really it's about scoring, not allowing your opponent to score, and just constantly threatening the wall uh, and putting pressure on them with your reactive move, consolidations, possible charges. Because sometimes you're not really intending to charge. You're just letting them know, hey, I can call wall and charge you. Think about it. Just sit your thumb right there, and you're like, I don't even care right now. I'm trying to wall turn three or four so I can you know, survive their clapback. Very cool to see. So one more look at the Cult of Speed before we put it away. We have the Death Killer War Trike, a single mech, a war boss, the 20-man unit of boys in the battle wagon, a Death Copter, a max unit of Death Copters, another max unit of Death Copters, and the Gretchen, followed by three units of Custom Boosted Blasters, three Mega Tracks Grab Jets, two Shock Jump Dragsters, one six-man unit of War Bikers, and two three-man unit of War Bikers. Last thought on this, the mech. Just keep in mind when you use the mech that his ability can only pop off at the end of his movement. So you can't pop people in the beginning of the movement and then they run away. Um, that would be like stronger, but you do have to do it later, which is why he kind of just sits back with, you know, custom booster blaster maybe, or he, he chooses to make the, the battle wagon actually have shooting potential. Um, I really would like to hear if that was worth it. You know, if this guy get, ever finds this video. So let me know if that mech is worth it. Not something I personally, I personally rate too highly to put a mech in this detachment. Yet I can see, you know, data sheet. Of, you can see he, he can get loan out with the battle wagon to try to score a secondary. He can uh, follow the buggies around a little bit and give them plus one, I guess, to hit with their rivet gun. I'm not seeing the play too much necessarily. 
uh, if it's worth it. But I guess when you have 45 left points left over, I probably would have chose more grots though. But I deal with a lot of hyper crypt and and you know pressure armies. Like having more grots against something like world eaters, for example, if you can take the second unit and just be like right in the front. Um, that helps. That helps. But nonetheless, he still did excellent. Who am I to criticize this git and this speed freak with red ones go faster? Whoa! For Pranis Kupris. Kupris. If you enjoyed the clip, check out the full video here. If you'd like to see more tactics, click here. Let's get stuck in, lads!